Good morning, my name is Michael Cates and I am a history teacher at Highland Park High School. The first time I heard about Juneteenth was uh, most likely when I was in college. I was don't believe it wasn't until I got into college. Although we had classes in regards to African American history, it wasn't really necessarily something that we talked about or was addressed. And so that history was kind of our history, African American history was kind of glazed over within the context of U.S. history. And we just learned about uh, slavery or we learned about the civil uh, rights uh, movement. We didn't really learn about the intricate details in regards to some of the things that took place uh, with our history. In the past, how I've celebrated, um, I've been, I've had the honor and distinction of being involved in a number of really great um, organizations. Um, for example, I, I was a uh, part of the Fort Des Moines Museum in Des Moines, Iowa, and then I went and ran the African American Museum of Iowa in Cedar Rapids. And when I was the education uh, director at the Fort Des Moines Museum, I would always um, create some type of classes and some type of activities around Juneteenth uh, for the community. And there would also, also be uh, different things that the YMCA would host in um, regards to Juneteenth around the community in Des Moines. When I uh, was working in Cedar Rapids as the director of the African American Museum of Iowa, uh, we had a committee that would get together and we would um, put together um, a Juneteenth celebration every year to really talk about and commemor commemorate the event. and. It was a really great time. Uh, they would start off um, with the reading of their uh, Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, there'd be dance, there'd be song, there'd be a, po a poetry reading of some type. And it would just really be a great way for uh, people to come out and really get a taste of African-American community. So it was always a really festival event where the general public was involved. You know, just learning about how um, almost two and a half years later, uh, General Granger had to go into Galveston, Texas and really uh, free or declare slavery uh, ended in uh, Texas and throughout the, the, that region. And so the Emancipation Proclamation uh, essentially freed the slaves on, I think it was January 1st of 1963. And again, we're looking at June, uh, June 19th. 1865 that the slaves were finally free and so it was a really big event and if you think about just the whole concept of uh, being free for two and a half, half years and not knowing about it and it's mind-blowing and even after that you know even after they declared their freedom uh, they still um, were not free because there were so many uh, riots and it was uh, intimidation to really keep these um, free men and I want to definitely call them free men now uh, from really enjoying their liberties. And so uh, historically, it would also be a way, Juneteenth was also a way for um, people to get out and vote. And so that was something that was done in regards to Juneteenth. And I think that's something that probably needs to be established again, really rallying people to vote. And I'm so proud that we celebrated. I'm so proud that more and more people, more and more um, cities and, and states around the region around the country are actually participating in this. And I really believe it should be a national holiday. And I think we really need to start moving to, in that direction to trying to make it a national holiday. Because again, uh, African-American history did not happen alone. It is indeed American history. Thank you.